Welcome to the School of Arts lecture. Welcome to our first belated uh, lecture of the spring. So we have a very slow start, uh, but we'll pick up speed rapidly. Uh, two weeks from now will be Mirko Zardini, and the week after that, Alessandro Monte. Uh, and so we'll be moving full speed into the second half of the semester with uh, more regular lectures. Uh, thanks for coming. I'm glad you're here. And in particular, I'm really glad that I'm here. Um, Thank you, Lord, for that. Tonight, uh, we're very pleased to be able to uh, welcome Luis Rojo to UIC in Chicago. Uh, Luis is a graduate of the ETSAM, or the School of Architecture in Madrid, where he uh, is also an associate professor of architecture, uh, as well as a graduate of Harvard's GSD, where he is a frequent visiting professor, uh, and he is also a visiting professor of history and theory in Navarra. Uh, in 1994, uh, Luis co-founded uh, the practice of Rojo Fernandez Shaw in Madrid, uh, and their work has been uh, selected in uh, for uh, the Spanish Architectural Biennale, uh, the FAD Prize, and the Venice Biennale among other venues. Um, in addition to his design practice, uh, Luis's writings on contemporary architecture have appeared in A plus U, El Proquis, Casabella, Tectonica, Circo, and others. Uh, Luis and his office have provocatively claimed uh, that architecture solves problems only to the degree that it also creates them. Uh, and I think that this is a kind of Faustian bargain that we're very familiar with in the school uh, and uh, sort of find a sympathy with that we only solve things at the same moment that we're uh, instigating a problem or exposing a new problem. Uh, in the case of one recent project by the office, uh, the city council in Caruma in Spain, uh, known also as Magic Mountain, uh, you can see this maybe in the way that the specific historical type of the agora collides with the specifics of uh, topography of landform uh, in a situation uh, maybe that engenders a new type of collective or maybe even urban space in the collision of those two uh, specific conditions. Um, we're very pleased that uh, Luis has come to share his work and also sit on some reviews. Uh, and we look forward to seeing maybe how uh, his solutions can become our problems, uh, or vice versa. Welcome, Luis. Because I meant that uh, talking about um, uh, architecture, not just uh, about my uh, about our work, but uh, in general. And I think that the um, the uh, combination of uh, uh, academic life and, and, and professional life shows uh, that uh, that is not necessarily a provocative statement, which might be it is, but also a confession that uh, that's uh, that the need to uh, make sure that uh, neither professional life nor academic life takes over. I guess we try to keep a balance between the two. We are completely convinced that uh, professional life uh, 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 you know, imposes on us a, a kind of demand daily life that requires a continuous revision that just academic life and the wider split. And, uh, we try to keep that balance with that way. I'm really very happy to be here in order to uh, sustain that argument. I'll start uh, uh, I think that you caught me the wrong one. <laughs>
make a solution. <laughs> Well, I will start precisely by uh, trying to explain how the video is this particular part of the performance we're talking about, the civic center in, uh, in the city of La Coruña, which is in the north of Spain, uh, facing the uh, Atlantic City, the Atlantic City, sorry. Uh, as you can see, it's one of those beautiful spots of nature destroyed by architecture. So, it might be a really more problem to be solved. Uh, all together, but uh, the uh, this uh, we were we are there. So we, we let me start by saying that um, when we finish architecture school, we basically try to uh, become architects, professionally speaking. So we set up uh, our office space and we sat down there and we realized we didn't have any work uh, and. Uh, you know, just kinds of things that you think you decide, you know. I'm an architect, so I uh, have my office. Uh, in Spain, there is a, a particular way, or there used to be. We don't know anymore if it will survive uh, in this uh, difficult future, but um, uh, it has been the case that in Spain, uh, all public works uh, have to go through a competition process that uh, allows for, allow for any architect to compete, to enter it. The competitions, and uh, as we were uh, completely uh, alone and we had no work and had no connection whatsoever, uh, we started uh, entering competitions. We discovered that was a, uh, a way or the only way to uh, have an access to uh, uh, commissions. And this is one uh, actually, we all of the projects that we have built, all of the commissions that we got are uh, the result of that. Uh, Competition process. We never had the pleasure of receiving a phone call, that kind of phone call that says, you know, you got the phone and they say, you want to design a building for me? Well, it never got through that. Uh, we had to wait to design the building first, you know, the, the fiction of the commission. So I want to I wanna make a library so you look for a competition for life. So you make, you make a product first and then you try to uh, get the commission. This was, uh, like all of the others, uh, uh, a competition that was uh, run by the City Hall of La Coruña. And then the competitions have this mm, amazing quality to them, is that they, they've been fought by people which are not architects, of course, and politicians most of the time, and they, they, they have ideas about things, about the world, about problems, about buildings, about money, about everything, that are not, it's not always easy to understand. In this particular case, they, they, they were trying to make this public building, this civic building, and they didn't know exactly what they wanted. So they put it into the program a piece of everything. So they, it has a library, and it has a theater, and it has a civic center, and it has a workshops, and it has a, a office space for, for the city hall, and it has a, a, an area where you can deal with the administrative uh, uh, issues uh, with the city hall, etc. And it was like a mix of things. And, and uh, so they, they call it, the city hall called it Agora. Uh, we call it the Magic Mountain just uh, because of the roofscape. Uh, uh. But the, the, I think the, the interesting thing about it is that the, 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 the program itself, uh, we re try to reinterpret it as a, uh, not as a public building, but as a almost uh, not, not like an hour, not like a space, not, not like a square, not like the space where the, 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 the social system would express itself through civic activities, but we thought that the building was a cross section of the city itself. It was not a place for representing public life, it was just a piece of public life uh, that happened within the crust of this building. So it was like if the city was interiorized in the building, not by mechanisms of representation or expression, but just by sheer reality. And uh, we try to take advantage of the ambiguity of the program and the lack of a strategy of the city hall in order to shift the project towards uh, this other idea that uh, had to do with uh, sort of uh, 
the fragment of the city itself, I mean, it's like 30. That meant uh, that a uh, lot of things were going to take place, a lot of uh, aspects of daily life uh, were going to take place, and, and it was important to uh, find a strategy to relate the complexity of that programmatic field taking place or activities in the building and the, and the shaping of, of the way the building is going to be shaped, form, formalized, you know, the world. And then, so we decided that, uh, that we were going to try, and I will explain this with another next project, quite the opposite uh, approach. Is the more complex the program, the less related to this, to uh, uh, the formal shaping of the building. So the more complex the program, the more demanding the, pro the, the program it is, the more things have to happen, the less architecture is needed in terms of uh, uh, formalizing those programs. And architecture has to shift towards another realm. Architecture choices have to be made somewhere else. So <coughs> we basically thought about making a building that was a, a container and a box, but rather than making it neutral, we would, we would give the container a lot of shape and not form. So we would uh, uh, organize the, the, the uh, spaces in a very neutral way, but we would articulate the elements of, of the building in a rather uh, uh, intense way. See in, in here that the, the building is in a balance between being in fragments and being unitary, being uh, having a shape, or being a number of pieces that have been collided together. Uh, it's a, uh, sort of a combination of an uh, extreme amount of articulations and at the same time a very neutral uh, system of uh, As you can see in the, in the, in the plan, this, this is the ground floor uh, from above and the energy uh, above uh, uh, <coughs> the level from the above street. You have a theater, you have the workshops, you have the office spaces. Uh, and a number of, of uh, elements of different kinds which are basically rendered by the furniture and by the occupation of that space uh, by all, all the secondary uh, infrastructure but the system is all homogeneous and continuous <coughs> and uh, like a repetitive pattern of nature space. And this actually brings us to this to the problem that we like to think that it was uh, uh, it's part of, of, of the project and part of the problem. Uh, it's whether the uh, whether the, the the architecture we were working with was have a unitary quality that uh, had a unifying system to it, or was it the result of an aggregation of fragments. And the tension between the two that uh, the program called for the fragmentation, for the difference between the different pieces and the imposition of a number of techniques that would create a sense of a unitary system that was uh, uh, capable of uh, uh, keeping that tension running. It would be, that tension would be read through in the building. And I, I, why we do, we, we're interested on this, I think, it, it back to the chopping on the head of the 16, uh, because I think that's part of the culture, the intellectual, uh, 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 problems that we have to deal with, whether we like them or not. I think we, we, we live in a, in a culture in which uh, the basic preference of systems uh, and, and uh, explanations of things were uh, cut it off, the same way that the, head of the, the king was, was uh, severed off by the guillotine. And ever since we've been in this sort of a dilemma, we've been sitting in our office thinking what do we do with all the number of things, with all the fragments of all the systems that we know about, but they are not available to us in a complete way. We, we tend to think that we can control them, but they, they are all already fragmented and incomplete. This is uh, Rack in his office, in his office, in studio, uh, in 1914, taking the picture was taken by Picasso, obviously, None of the two were painting. They had a problem of, you know, whether that was to paint. So, but I think happens to us 
whenever we think in our office. So we're really trying to build in what building do we design and why. So that systematic uh, uh, capacity to make anything we want and that need to ask to any of those answers why and how you can do it. I think that uh, technology has played a role in all this sort of a fragmentation of uh, uh, systems, uh, creating a sense of freedom and a sense of uh, capacity to deal with things at the same time that has created a crisis, so uh, part of the crisis, and we have to deal with that in different ways. Uh, I think that we, as architects, have been systematically educated, been educated in, in, in the idea that uh, the avant-garde movements of the 20th century and its uh, 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 desire to give a, a, a new and rational explanation of things just have to uh, retry over and over again the, the desire of architecture to present itself as uh, something coherent. And I think that by now we know that it's precisely the uh, uh, those movements in the those uh, avant-garde movements in the early 20th century that precluded that precisely that it was impossible to give a, a, a coherent explanation about things like surrealism, this Max Ernst being like a degree of kindness, uh, that uh, we have to uh, look back into architecture and say, for example, that we create as many problems as we solve. That architecture is just a sort of a system of, uh, uh, sort of a balance between different uh, 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 logics that are conflating one single case and in one single moment, and that we can balance those conflicts, we can control those conflicts, but we cannot avoid the word, you know, avoid the concept of the contested condition of our place. I like um, the the images of, of, of modern architecture that I think we, we should be looking at, those in which uh, problems come to the surface uh, immediately, these are uh, uh, apartment uh, for Verastegui built by the Corbusier in the 1930s, which uh, we can see already that, uh, uh, that all the different discourses, all the different uh, uh, aesthetics of different logics that come together in one single space in order to create uh, uh, as many uh, uh, questions as answers, as many problems as solutions. You know? And I, I think that uh, it has to do with uh, uh, this problem of uh, knowing uh, which, is, which are the techniques, which are the resources that we have to use in order to solve the problem. You know? This is. Uh, what happens if you don't know the rules? This uh, movie by uh, what's his name? Uh, this coming from his nest. <coughs> well, he, you know, he, this is uh, this movie in which he, he buys, he gets married, and he buys a house. box with all the visas he sent to him. But then he has a quarrel with the, with the driver. And the driver uh, is you know, something about not being paid, you know, something like that. So the guy takes away the, the instructions. And uh, so uh, he has to build the house without instructions. And this is what he gets. He gets like a very a conventional house, but he gets a house. It, it is, distortion of the rule, distortion of the norm, uh, manipulation of, of, of the system which is being worked out uh, in, a, in, a, in a way which is against its own uh, uh, logic. That's the way in which uh, we try to think uh, 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 this problem. Precisely the, uh, the program was very specific about the needs and the response we tried to give it was you know the needs now, but you don't know them in the future. You don't know them in the future. Uh, and most importantly, if it's a public building, we don't think that architecture has the right to close the potential use of the building. We don't 
we cannot predict what's going to happen in the future. We cannot institutionalize the public space. We have to make sure that the, the building itself is this gap, this cross-section of, of the city, of the social system, so that there is an amount of specificity which is being uh, uh, introduced by the architecture, and there is an amount of, of uh, uh, impredictability that comes with the use of the building that we have no right to, no desire either to, to, to control. So what we, we basically uh, uh, did was to try to uh, void the building in the inside, to, to just make it like a container in the sense that you know, the Pompidou Center is, for example, and we tried to follow some of the uh, techniques that we, I think we, we, one can learn from the Pompidou, with, uh, which I think are very useful. It's precisely that you void the inside of the building and you project both circulation and structure to the edges. So you, what you create is a ring around uh, 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 the space, which is rather neutral and usable in many different ways, which is the inside. And you basically uh, uh, build a large structure, which has a lot of iconographic and iconic uh, qualities to it, that it becomes the image of it. And uh, you enclose it with a skin that works uh, uh, attached to that uh, uh, structure in a way that uh, links construction and structure with uh, the image and the orientation of the building, and you leave space and function completely neutral and transparent. So the different uh, uh, sections of, of uh, the building tried to deal with this idea of the crust that has pointed the inside and a number of elements, some of them are more directed towards uh, uh, creating enclosed spaces where all the different programs can take place or some of the others are dealing with building connections and, and uh, common spaces that uh, make sure that the different, uh, different articulations of uh, the, the building uh, due to the this fragmentation uh, uh, operation that has been taking uh, in place before uh, create a balance between uh, the voided inside and the articulated enclosure. That's how we uh, built it. It's, it's a large steel structure that uh, tries to uh, 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 left itself from the ground so that the building will have no front and no back. Uh, meaning by that, that the, taking advantage of the slope, the building will place itself anchored on, on this retaining wall which are on one side of the site so that when you approach the building from one side you have an entry, a clear entry at the ground floor and when you approach the building from below what you have is a voided space below that creates also uh, and program, more unprogrammed space below that can be used uh, in different ways uh, as a transition between the uh, street space and the, uh, and the inside of the building because it's neither inside nor outside. As I said before, the construction system was uh, uh, also developed out of these two problems. One that uh, once the, the, uh, the uh, a building was split somehow in three different, four different uh, uh, boxes or four different fingers that were close together but almost uh, separated from each other. The whole building, the whole thing, the four of them were built with the same structure. They had a scale that overruled any of them, any unity or any identity of each of them, and looked like one single thing. And also the constructive uh, uh, procedure, the construction system, construction system with which we built it was uniform all throughout. But the whole building was prefabricated with a system either of prefab uh, uh, beams in concrete that uh, were replicated in the roof that had a, a, a more articulated shape in these uh, system of uh, 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 yes, uh, it's wood beams that are, are made of layers glued and they can be shaped uh, uh, to uh, uh, more uh, sort of 
sophisticated or complex uh, shapes. And this is how we uh, uh, deal with the difference between the regular pattern horizontal slabs built in, in prefab concrete and the ones that had shapes that were related to the shape of the roof were uh, uh, built in wood in order to uh, make sure that the, side, the, the form of the roof was uh, replicated in the inside uh, directly. And this is how the, uh, uh, the structure that was pushed to the side, that was uh, sort of designed at the scale of the whole building, the, uh, tried to, uh, to take control along with construction uh, of the image of the building, of the, the, the presence of the building as a, a, a such. This is the, the site, uh, uh, probably uh, Luis is going to uh, uh, like this site, perfectly for him because it's, you see it's on the edge. <laughs> the they, you know, this is how they, they, they build cities in Spain. Uh, uh, there is a guy that throws a line in a plan and says, this side city, this side uh, country, uh, countryside. Uh, so this is all agriculture, you know, these people have their own uh, uh, orchards and, 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 and cows, and right in there, the city starts like a wall, and our building was precisely on that, uh, on the other side, on the outer side of the line. And we tried to uh, uh, build uh, on the outside uh, these uh, literal uh, reflection, this literal image of, of, of that landscape that was being destroyed by the city as it moves beyond the line uh, towards uh, the, the hill, up the hill, uh, in order to continue with the urbanization of the city. Due to the economic crisis, they have stopped urbanizing in everything, thanks God, and the building has been left on the edge uh, like that. And when you go up the roof and you look backwards, you get that connection in a rather literal way. Uh, because the, the countryside with an agricultural atmospheric quality and almost uh, you know, literal, it's not landscape, it's just agricultural, comes all the way to the edge of the city. This is the entry from the front, from the, the street, and it has more frontal uh, quality. And the inside uh, has that. Uh, hopefully that condition of being uh, empty space, an unformalized space that can be used according to uh, furniture or other kind of uh, criteria that they have. And then from the other side of the site, when you arrive from uh, down the hill, the building uh, proposes another kind of uh, entry, another kind of approach to the building, which is by lifting itself from the ground, it creates a void space below which is the one that allows to go new and then all the way into the same spot, the one floor below uh, from the other entry. This is the, the for the uh, enclosure we uh, uh, we think we thought that uh, uh, could resort to, to the technique of uh, literal transparency in the, in the porting wall, which uh, uh, allowed us to use both the construction system and the structure as the, to reinforce the idea that those are the two elements which built the, construct the, the, the image of the building in a, in a rather very often ornamental way because you see, you see pieces of the structure, you see fragments of the structure. They have no, they have no logic. When, when the structure is fragmented, it has no logic and it becomes uh, something else. It has an uh, shapes, figure, more ornamental altogether. This is the main lobby as you enter, and a series of mechanisms that have to do with uh, bringing light and ventilation. 
these spaces. <coughs> the uh, quarting wall, we built it uh, uh, using a, a huge top and a huge uh, uh, that was a, was a beam, one of the beams in, um, with which we built the room, we turned it down, we put it vertically, and we use it uh, uh, as a, uh, a structural member of the courting wall, so that the courting wall was barely a very thin uh, layer of glass that allows for uh, introducing a certain texture, a certain depth to the courting wall that links itself with, with the roof and creates a sense of uh, enclosure. So the idea that the exterior space of the building has been internalized within the building uh, has to be read against this idea of the building as being a crust built with sort of, uh, uh, materials like wood and, 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 and the like that uh, create a certain sense of interiority within that space which reads as well as a, an outdoor or exterior space creating, creating uh, a central sense of consultation reminding you that they are trying to be both at the same time. As you can see here, the, the beams turn down and they become the structural members of the court wall, or here in the library, right in front of the large structure and it's built in steel. And this is the, the, uh, the small theater that it has. We like to think that um, the, uh, the precisely the, the uh, uh, furniture, the, the activity of, uh, of the way that people use the building, which actually uh, uh, identify uh, uh, the functional elements and give a sense of what the building uh, wants to be. Uh, in, in uh, each of its uh, elements, and you can see that at the end, the uh, we were uh, uh, we were asked to design the furniture and to, to design the whole way in which the building was occupied. Uh, uh, fortunately, precisely because uh, we insisted that the building wasn't finished and literally wasn't finished until the furniture came in, and uh, the same way that in the library here. The space reads uh, the same uh, when out without the furniture as the workshop space, but the moment it's occupied by the furniture, the moment it's occupied by the use, which is derived from the furniture itself, from, from the way the uh, strictly the, the, the elements of the library uh, are being uh, uh, displayed. And, uh, the whole thing uh, uh, takes another uh, uh, character. You remove the furniture, you remove the, the, the library, and it can be used for uh, other um, purposes. The, and so we, uh, uh, there was a point in which, of course, this was uh, uh, that moment in which buildings are given away. Fortunately, when you finish them and you have them give you more headaches, at least for a while. And then uh, we, this is the photograph we've been sent lately from from there, in which we we uh, uh, this is a, a like a like a festival of details that uh, uh, they were asked to use the theater and they said no, we don't want the theater, just one space. Just below, we want the space that has no shape, that has no character, so we can do our thing, you know, whatever they are doing, which I don't know. But I guess, well, like this guy that decided to paint the facade because, you know, it's, the, it seems like the building is instrumental to a lot of things that have nothing to do with the architecture and I don't do that. So that, that can uh, give us a lot of uh, joy. In that uh, uh, um, idea of uh, uh, using the structure as the main mechanographical uh, element of, of, uh, of the architecture, precisely because it's the one that, uh, in, in which, uh, for which the architect has 
so to say, so to speak, more authority. I mean, uh, and it's more stable at the end of the day within the, the, the architecture of, of, of the project. We uh, try to develop this idea of, uh, of the uh, structure being the main uh, uh, component of the image of the building of, uh, in this uh, uh, sports center in, uh, in uh, the south of uh, Spain, in which we were asked to, uh, to design, it was also a competition, a large uh, uh, sports center which had um, uh, three uh, volleyball, volleyball courts, uh, which is basically twice as much as uh, a regular uh, sports center, at least of its kind. So that asked for larger spans and a larger structure, more space without impediment or without column. And the, the, uh, uh, again, we thought about the possibility of building this in a, in a, in a landscape uh, area, in a park, and we thought that it was uh, important to, uh, uh, precisely because of its environment, to make the building both at the same time light, so if it was uh, weightless, and at the same time that its boundaries, its, its limits were uh, rather diffuse in order to allow for all the things to happen around, all the programs that were <laughs> as relevant as the, 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 the volleyball or the basketball inside, all the other things that could happen if uh, uh, the building had two faces towards the inside as well as towards the outside. And we try to uh, uh, work uh, uh, with uh, that idea, shaping it uh, like if it was uh, almost uh, like a figure without front and, uh, uh, and back, without orientation, uh, which is a, was a, some kind of a contradiction within with the uh, almost symmetrical plan of the of the of the courts inside, and we try to use the space in between in order to, as a buffer, in order to dissolve that symmetry, in order to dissolve that uh, uh, rigid uh, uh, form and uh, create a, a boundary, a softer boundary that would uh, fuse the building with the surroundings and would create conditions that would face both sides. I think that's the, 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 the way in which uh, we try to, do. But this is a matter of uh, picture of the, 1970s is the way in which we try to use somehow technology. That we, we try to uh, use technology against, once again, against its own logic. We try to, we built a building that was hanging from itself. We turn it upside down. We work against uh, our gravity precisely to make the building read light. In order to create a sense that the building had no weight that it was not an object, that it was not imposed on the ground, becoming an impediment between what was on one side and the other. We basically lift the building and hang it from above in order to make it read as it wouldn't touch the ground, which it does, but it doesn't show. So we introduce within the logic of structure a very uh, a conscious contradiction in order to achieve by means of that distortion of last of a structure, uh, a sense of lightness that had to do with the, the idea of uh, the, the fusing with the conflict and the image of the This is the, 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 the roof itself, it has four legs, it's like a table, it's like a table, it has four legs built in concrete and a series of beams which run across, this is uh, 45 meters and this is 80 meters, a span, and then because of the problem of uh, using such large spans, what we did was to continue the beams on the other side and hang the uh, uh, facade from the edge of the beam so that it would counterweight the, the, the uh, deformation of the beam that was uh, running across and it would create a structure that was much more efficient. We could convince the client that the, the, even though the span was huge, and the building was being built almost upside down, the structural system was efficient enough precisely because the facade was uh, counterbalancing 
this pattern of uh, videos. Just we made the model for uh, the competition, and we basically worked it that way. The beam is on the upper side of the roof, and it cantilevers on the sides, and we hang the uh, facade on the edges. It has to do with, uh, with uh, manipulating the structure in an ornamental way, so to speak, but it also has to do with the literal ornamental quality of the facade as a surface for the, just the material quality, the, the textural quality, the ornamental quality of the surface. As such, as you can see here, this is, this is sort of a replication of, of the, the, the sense of uh, the, the image of woods and, 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 and trees uh, being replicated in the skin of the uh, building uh, also with uh, wood. You can see here the four uh, uh, columns of concrete and the steel structure almost like this flat uh, plane table on top. And this is the, 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 uh, the way in which the elevation uh, was worked out. It's hanging from above here, hangs from from here. It hangs from above. It's a steel structure, works like a large beam, which is uh, nine meters uh, uh, tall, and it has a number of steel members which are camouflaged within the diagonal pattern, the system of the uh, uh, staff. Not all the buildings are enjoyable to build. People that like to go to site visits is because they don't have site visits to make. At least in Spain, all you do is discuss about money with people which don't care about anything else. So there's no nothing romantic about going to a site visit. It's just like, like going to boxing. This one in particular was fun because the structural excess of the building, the, the whole construction system was exceptional and really was it was beautiful to see how the the the, the inverse logic of the building was being developed uh, for the surprise of the construction company that realized too late what, what, what were they doing. It was a very artificial moment in which the table was set in the left and then the the beam, the, the elevation, the facade hang up. very light because it's all in tension. So it's working on the side of, 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 of the material and the tension capacity of the steel. You can reduce the sections in such a way that it doesn't read the steel, it doesn't read the structure. I mean, the moment you don't read the structure, then you think it's light. Lightness is, is just in the imagination, it has nothing to do with the building, it weights as much as any other. But the moment you don't read the structure working from top to, you know, from up to down, from, from there to there, from the roof to the ground, the moment you don't see the logic of the structure, you tend to think that things have no weight, because there's no, nothing, there's no element with the architecture that's taking care of that. So if it doesn't, if the load is not being carried, because there's and I think that that sort of a distorted perception of the problem works uh, quite well. And this is the, the roof structure with the uh, facade hanging, just moving around, and it was a courtroom. And uh, there are points in which it has to be taken care of for the, because of the wind, but not because of the, of the weight. And later on, the, the filling in of, of this textile condition is to, to uh, literally a yeah, screen or, or a cloth uh, with the sort of shadow that reminds you that the building is not on the ground, so it's light. We've been five years with this and we haven't finished it. It was nice until it became a problem, but uh, keep on going and, and you know, things 
from nature readings and everything. Uh, but there is a transparency there and other things that uh, we are confident that if we finish the building one day within this century, the new king. And we started in almost in the other centuries. So it's not a joke. Issue, have you uh, cross through? Have you open up the hole on something that has the desire to stay continuous to be continues to be <coughs> texture and not figure? And then on the inside, uh, that uh, the result of, of, uh, sort of operating with the structure as if it was not, as if it was a wall. This is like a wall in which you just make void, solid, void, solid which is a manipulation of the structure, uh, of the perception of the structure, but the structure itself uh, creates a lightness, like a sense of a lightness that actually uh, uh, allows for uh, seeing this space as quite transparent and not like a huge uh, open space with a huge structure on top of it. And two, uh, the last and third project is, is uh, Historical archive, which is finished in uh, in Guadalajara, which is north of Madrid, uh, which is one of those. As you can see, Spain is. Uh, uh, I guess the schools are schools of architecture because that old thing called urbanism is something which I'm not sure about, but certainly in Spain it's not. And they built till they just get old, and then they just stop. So. The difference between the city and the countryside is a legal line. And, and you know, it, well, uh, it's, it's uh, one of those cities that was built up to the Civil War, and, and it has that that quality. Uh, it is a historical center and a main uh, 20th century street uh, with public buildings uh, on the sides. And we were asked to design this national historical archive there. The, the problem with the archive is that it's a uh, it's literally a safe box. So when it comes to its position within the city, it's a rather problematic building because it has no windows whatsoever. It's like a rock. It's like a it's like a inaccessible building. It's, it's a safe box. They keep buildings, they keep uh, paper safe and uh, archivists they don't like people. They like papers. Uh, so it's like librarians somehow they like books and they don't like to lend them, but uh, archivists are even more so because uh, they think that people do not do not know how to handle paper and they destroy documents. So they, they from, from the uh, historical and classical origins of the archivist, which is the one that holds the, the knowledge and the law, the contemporary archivist, they just handle documents for, for uh, administrative purposes and some historical records uh, and they handled as a program there was a competition as well in which they basically wanted that they wanted the same box but for some reason they had bought the, one of the most public sites within the city and we thought there was a contradiction in that that we could not put the same box in a public street in the middle of the city and say that architecture had solved the problem so we started thinking this project against or, or related to the project in Galicia, the, the Galicia the building was like a, like a section of the of the of life of the city, as I said, and this was and, and the result of that complexity it had a piece of every activity and every kind of uh, piece of life within the city uh, told us or recommended us to uh, to make a building that had no no excessive form the least of the four possible. And I was the most flexible, the most open-ended, the most uh, 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 transparent possible. This was the, was the opposite. We realized that the, the, the program for this building was very specific. They wanted 24 rooms the same size, built in concrete, to, they were like, like 24 safe boxes, the large safe box, within which they could change the document. It was, it was literally a grid of, of concrete to protect the uh, documents from fire. And uh, the, 
the specificity of the, pro of, of the uh, program actually turn the whole architecture into a very simple thing. So the more specific the program, the more simple the building. The more, the, the least specific the program, like in Agora, the more complex the, the, the building could be. So we, have to, we, we thought we had to fight against that simplification, that oversimplification due to the fact that the client itself knew perfectly well what they wanted they were very clear, the, the needs were very clear. And this, this is how uh, uh, we are uh, uh, trying to uh, resolve the, the problem. You can see the building is a grid of, uh, uh, of concrete slabs and, and, and walls, which are 40 centimeters width, precisely for five core reasons. And that grid uh, uh, in, in, in the, the idea of the archivist, in the, the canon, so to speak, the morphology, the canonical morphology of the, of the archive, the, that becomes the main body of, of the building, like a box, which is almost industrial in its, in its quality. And then there's another part of the program, which is where the offices and the public spaces are, which is less than 15% of the building, which is separated from, from, from that other piece for security reasons so that people would access a part of the building would be detached from the most secure one where the documents are uh, hanged. So we tried to convince them, well, we just submitted a competition entry so that, that those two pieces would be together. In a sense, creating the problem for ourselves. We embedded within the grid, we introduced within the safe box the part of the problem that was public and that was transparent. And we came to this, again, this sort of a conflict that we had to use the grid, the geometry, the, the, the system of the safe box in order to fill in the transparent space, the public accessible spaces uh, that were uh, public. And then again, we also thought that uh, somehow the building had to respond to uh, its uh, surroundings. Not that we think that the, the problem of the context, the physical context, is the most important one, which we don't. We think at least that most of the cities we deal with uh, are not to be very seriously considered as context because they are the result of uh, many different uh, strategies that have nothing to do with each other, so there's no logic or or sort of a substance to respond to, so I think that we have to be very careful about that. But in this particular case, there were a series of issues uh, relating to, uh, to the city that we wanted to respond to. So we, we thought that at the end, again, seen against the, the, the building in La Coruña in Agra, that uh, the building, in this particular case, they were asking for a project, literally for a project. They were asking for a closed shape for something that was definitely clear. There was, there was, had a pattern that was a result of a, a programmatic needs that were very well calibrated by, by the archivist, and that the building was almost a response to that. And we tried to convince them, we tried, we, we like to think, that we are not that interested in, in projects, in, in, in close answers, but again, we are interested in, in systems that have a certain degree formability, that uh, introduce a system of order like the one they were, with, they were requiring, but at the same time there are a number of deformations, a number of transformations that can be introduced within that pattern, within that system, that allow for other things to happen, like the exposition, the expression of the public role of the archive within the city. The archive archivist, they think it's a private space, without the archive it's literally the memory of the city. It's the memory of the social system. It holds all the information. It can be transformed into a public instrument. And this is how we uh, uh, inserted in the city the, the, the building, trying to uh, uh, show that there is another public building here to which this one was trying to uh, uh, attach itself. There is a frontal street that had to be 
responded to, that have to be uh, uh, acknowledged, even though you cannot enter the building frontally precisely because there is a part in front and you have to enter at a diagonal, you have to enter like in a scarf. And uh, there is a, a, a very steep slope in that direction and we thought precisely because the archivist said no, the worst about architects is that they always get leaked. to be well behaved but you uh, will have lit so we want no single piece of building below ground. And we thought wow well, we were lucky. So we don't have we cannot put the building on the ground. That's what you're saying. That's what they mean. They mean that, that no part of the archive can be below the, the, the ground level of the earth because there are more potential for, for leaks to happen. Documents strong. So we basically what we did was to think that the building would not transform the shape of the slope. The building would adapt itself to the slope, and in doing so in section we also do it in plan. Like if the building was like unstable and the building is falling down the, the slope, and that will introduce a deformation of the grid that was the grid that was established by the uh, uh, archives themselves. This is how we started to work out the system. So the uh, the building would uh, deform itself in order to follow the line of, of, of the slope, and would also deform itself in order to show the difference between the four sides of, of, of the side without uh, uh, changing the, the so the, the way the, the facades or the elevations were being made. That sense of it being a rock, like a like a and what it is, like a, like a box without windows. And then this issue of the transparency and the, 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 uh, so the compactness of, of, of both programs within one single uh, shape. The, the public program, which is accessible and transparent, which is the one in pink, in red. And the, uh, uh, the gridded system of, of, of concrete, but the concrete of the uh, uh, archives, or say boxes, which Basically, what we say is that if the building cannot touch the ground, everything that is at the ground level should be public. And if the people can move that way, that's transparent space that you can see through, there is a moment in which you can cut this sliver through, and for one second, for one single instance, you can see inside into the archive. You can see what the archivists do, which is so hidden from the view and expose the, uh, uh, the use of the building and the quality of the archive as a you know, the place where public and social memory is being uh, preserved and uh, conserved. And so that's how we uh, uh, develop uh, the project. The ground level on the front of the building, the spaces, the, the, the grid has been hollowed, though the structure stays as a trace of the existing green above and like a transparent uh, uh, free plan with objects floating uh, is created that looks into this liver, is to the gap in between that goes all the way down below these boxes, these, these archives and uh, to the other side of the building. When you cut it through precisely there it's like it's like a panopticon, it's like a jail which is what the archivists want. They want a jail. They want to be in the center of the panopticon. They want to see everybody. They, want to, they don't want to be seen. And what we did was to build a panopticon that had an open as hollow, like an open uh, 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 like a hollow space, like a, like a window that would look into the panopticon and you would see the jail, the, the, the archive uh, working. And this is how at the end, this is the, literally the, 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 the uh, geometrical uh, device that we used uh, in order to uh, accomplish the, the, the task of introducing within the grid the deformation of the grid through the diagonals, which is what which is what these things do. The, this line 
actually cuts exactly uh, uh, across, while this line goes from the edge of that one to the edge of this one. And so without breaking the geometrical rule, you create a distortion within the grid that is the one that allows you to <coughs> by translating that into the plan into the elevation <coughs> to sustain that sort of a tension between uh, uh, one, system, uh, one system and the other. This is the this is the elevation as it slows down. And this is how it was built with the walls uh, in white concrete. Uh, and then we covered the sort of a panel at the, the, the three sides of the roof and, and the eastern and western side of the, of the facade with this screen. This, uh, this is a, a aluminum case that had been hollow uh, with very small uh, uh, pattern. And then we have shaped them uh, uh, in these different ways in order to create uh, literally uh, an ornamental surface again, uh, which basically works uh, as a classical molding without the classical canon, uh, uh, with a sort of a degree of obstruction uh, that comes to that comes with the, the, the uh, particular geometry of the diagonals. And, See from the inside. This is the, the archive itself, the 124. They put here the, the, uh, the stacks which are, uh, are mechanically uh, moved and it becomes just like a solid uh, room. I can feel uh, the whole thing except this thin corridor uh, like the window. And this is how we, we uh, I started during construction to, to see the, the, the sort of a gap that runs first horizontally in the ground level, sorry, and then vertically in front that looks into the gallery where the uh, archivist uh, work. And this is how the uh, frontality of the uh, main facade works along the day, uh, creating different kinds of uh, transparencies that obviously are uh, more uh, stronger mostly at that, at that square at night. And then on the inside, the, all, the whole uh, uh, public space has been wrapped with, with, a, with a wooden uh, surface that built the, the paneling of the elevation of the facade to the interior facade the walls, as well as the, uh, as the ceilings in order to create a continuity, a sense of uh, there's a continuous uh, uh, space in the public areas that defy or fight against the compartmentation of the grid that come from the uh, concrete walls above. You can see here, the, this is the rounded piece that is a, a classroom that is mis displaced within the grid. It's like working uh, against it as well as this. Uh, uh, this is a, the, the meeting room for the archivists that you actually, uh, they didn't like the joke, but we told them that from there they could survey and make sure that everything was right. They didn't like the joke. This is the, the, the that, uh, room, uh, that curved room has a different uh, layers of transparency towards the outside in order to create an environment that was accessible and visible from the outside at the same time was uh, uh, controlled enough to be uh, a working place uh, capable of uh, responding to their needs. This is a small uh, auditorium, and that's the, the kind of uh, the kind of transparency that you have when you look through the screen that we have seen before. And then the, 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 the same way that the building tries to be uh, well, that's the, the sliver through the, the, the gap that cuts through in the inside that allows uh, at the point where it's supposed to be more hidden, where they, they move with the documents, where they cut uh, through the, the sort of sliver through, 
tries to make it at the same time more transparent. On the other side, it has this sort of a, a condition which is contradictory, and it's, it's, it's like a very solid, um, very geometrical piece at the same time. It's, it has been deformed by the slope, this one by, deformed by the shift in the plan, and also at certain points by the transparencies uh, towards the inside. And as you see it from below, from, from, from down the street, uh, we just cut this elevation in such a way that it does not coincide with the alignment of the street, does not coincide with the geometry of the, of the archive itself, of the, of the rooms. And we try to expose that as uh, another way to make the building more understandable or more transparent, precisely where you cannot see it. Uh, Archive by uh, displaying the mismatch of the geometries, the, the straight line, and the street alignment, and the uh, obliqueness of the uh, section of the, of the uh, archive. And this is uh, the, as you can see, the, the, the back of the, of the, of the archives. The, um, this is a north elevation, we built it in glass, screen glass, but glass, and they complain about the fact that. It was too much light into the archives, and we thought, well, you know, another occasion to do something without being noticed, and we build these uh, these elevation in this sort of the outer side of the elevation. This is sort of a layer of the outer uh, a layer of the elevation, of the north elevation, with these uh, curved uh, uh, glasses that give you. Uh, Within that repetition that you have uh, behind the, the sort of rigid uh, uh, repetition, rigid repetition of the grid, you have a, a, a constant deformation, not of the grid itself, but of the reception of the grid because of the curved uh, uh, glass deformed that transforms uh, uh, lines and figures behind.
technology has been in field the facade of the scorpions or in the glass moment. And there is nothing else to fight against than you're by yourself. And it's just really like a formal uh, kind of um, enjoyment. No? And, and but you don't then you don't you don't seem to enjoy it so much. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean like no, in the sense that you don't talk about it so much. It's like a lot about the, the kind of the, the process of like the resistance and the moment that you've just been a very a very kind of like skill in every project and so you say and it's the ornamental thing and you just keep the next one. Well it's public architecture, it's public money.
truth of the matter is that uh, maybe the last 50 years, uh, they have been used good for architecture, good for architecture in uh, Altogether, it has been used as a, the construction of national identity. It's not just architecture itself, it's a, the whole construction of the political system has used architecture very consciously to develop an image. Thank <laughs> you.